go to church once in a while and join your fellow Christians in uh, worshiping in, in your church again before it's converted to some other uh, house of faith, if you get the drift. Maybe this is a, there's a silver lining in all of this. Maybe America will assert its own national sovereignty as a result of this hatred coming at us from so many places on earth, including within this nation itself. Uh, you never know. You'll never know. 855-407-282 is the phone number. We're talking about the number one topic, the only topic anyone's talking about, which is the aftermath of the San Bernardino attacks uh, by those Muslim terrorists and Donald Trump's st statement that, frankly, you heard the statement. I'm not going to repeat it over and over again and paraphrase him. And the people who had nothing to say about the terrorist attacks, those who were most silent about the Muslim terrorist attacks, are now most vocal in the vociferous racist attacks against Donald Trump. That tells you all you need to know about the falsehood of liberalism. 855-400-728. There's so much I want to say to you right now. I'm holding back for a number of reasons. You know, the primary reason is, is that I think you need to make up your own mind. Because I did tell you that I was going to tell you what I thought Donald Trump's speech would mean with regard to the long run to the White House. And I will do so. I'll tell you that right now when I come back on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. Well, it's a re very dangerous world we're in where if you say one word, you're excommunicated by the media and uh, by the government, obviously. Donald Trump is in a new world. He's a man who's been in the entertainment and business world where he more or less could say anything he wants. He's been successful at it. Now he's entered another world, which is the world of politics, which is a vicious, cruel, undemocratic world. And I live in it myself. I have for 21 years. I have uh, been on this whitewater journey for 21 years. And the thing is, is you can't say certain things, even if they're rational or, or correct. He could have put it another way, and I, I do think he made a mistake. And I think I should get right to the point, because I don't have a lot of time in this segment, and it takes me a while to say things that I think are very important. They're going to be quoted. Will this affect his run for the presidency? Yes. Positively or negatively? Answer negatively. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Do you agree or disagree with him? I, I want to put that aside for it. It doesn't matter whether I agree with him or disagree with him at all. What matters now is whether or not this increased or decreased his chances to beat Hillary Clinton. She is unqualified to be the president. You know that if there was a fair media, she would have been disqualified from the get-go because they would have focused on Benghazi. They would have focused on the Arab Spring. They would have continuously harped on the fact that her Arab Spring policy caused this massive, massive uh, refugee crisis around the world. She did it. She, she owns that. She owns that. So it's an unfair media landscape, and you've got a dumb electorate out there. Now, given that we have an unfair, biased, criminal media and a stupid electorate, now take Trump's comments and understand what, where I'm gonna, what I'm going to say. Don't take me out of context. If he runs and he's on the ballot, I'll vote for him. Let me make that very clear. But there's a vast number of people who are not conservative, who are middle of the road, there are a vast number of Democrats, so-called, uh, I don't know what to call them, Reagan Democrats, who are undecided, who are going for him. They're all cowards. They're terrified of their own shadow. They're afraid of their own feelings, and they don't want to ever look like they're bad people. They're not going to vote for him. The middle of the voters, the swing voters, are not going to vote for him because of this. That's my opinion. It doesn't mean I want that to happen. I consider Donald Trump a great candidate. I'd love to see him as president. I am telling you the reality as I see it. Now you have another hurdle to overcome. Forget the biased communist media. Forget all of the useless idiots in the media who hate anybody who's a nationalist and loves their own country. With the exception, unless you're from Somalia or Saudi Arabia or Pakistan, then they genuflect on their hands and knees and, and salute your, uh, uh, your nationalism. But put that aside. Let me repeat what I just said to you. 
And you've got the delegates to deal with. You've got the Republican delegates that he's got to swing over to his side. Who are they? Who are the delegates? And what are they going to say with regard to a thing like this when they're afraid of their own shadow? So you have a very serious problem here. It could be a fatal error that he made. I didn't say I want it to be. I know you don't want to hear this. I know you want me to get up on the radio and go gung-ho. He's right. I agree with him 100%. You know, all, uh, all, all st full steam ahead. No, that's not what I'm going to say. I just told you what I believe. I believe it was a fatal mistake because I certainly wouldn't have said it. In my book, Government Zero, which was very carefully written, by the way, I said ban all immigrants for seven years, didn't I? Did I say ban all Muslim immigrants? No. I didn't say it because I don't think that's the right approach. I think it's ban all immigrants for seven years. That's what I believe should have been said. People make mistakes. I made mistakes. He, he's fallible. He made a mistake. Now, the only question is, do you think he can overcome this mistake? The base will be with him now no matter what he does. The base will be with him no matter what he does. We're not talking about the base, the conservative base. We're talking about the, and we're not talking about the commie, liberal, socialist, Islamist welfare base. We're talking about the vast number of swing voters. Think about them when you think about whether what Donald Trump said will hurt him or help him. He is helping the enemy of this nation. He is empowering radical Islam. And if he knew anything about the world at all, you would know that most Muslims reject this ideology and they died in by the thousands trying to combat this radical ideology you're undercutting their efforts you're slandering right, their that's, sacrifice that's Lindsey graham the loser he has no standing whatsoever he's nothing but a failed trial lawyer and he took uh, every shot he could at donald trump because he figured that's the best way to get even with him but the fact is that donald trump is is driving the biggest question there is which is immigration he started the immigration debate it wasn't for him those losers on the Republican ticket wouldn't even be talking about immigration. They would have gone along with everything else. The budget, right? You wouldn't even be talking about immigration was it not for Donald. Now, I'll tell you right now, the topic of Muslims is going to become a topic in America because of Donald Trump. Irrespective of whether it helps or hurts him for the presidency, the issue of Muslims is going to be discussed in America. Now, people are saying that he's... Make, he made a big mistake because if you single people out for their religion, for their religion, you're violating the Constitution. Well, they're right. But here's the conundrum. For the Islamists, Islam is not a religion. It's a political force. It's a combination of a religion and a political ideology. I'm sure you've heard this before. It's not novel to my show. It is a religio-political uh, organization for many terrorists. In other words, the terrorists are not... We, let's put it another way, maybe a way that's more palatable to those of you with with uh, reason. Islam is a religion to those who practice Islam. Now, we're told over and over again that the terrorists don't represent Islam. Isn't that right? Isn't that what we hear from Obama and the liberal press? That the terrorists and ISIS are not Muslims. Didn't we hear that? Is that, is that true or not? Haven't we heard that a hundred times? The terrorists in ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the others are not Muslims. Well, they call themselves the Islamic State. I don't know how you could say they're not Muslims. They're a uh, fundamentalist branch of Islam. They are Muslims for sure. But they're practicing a political rather than a purely religious form of their religious system. They're, they want to impose their political view upon everyone around them not their religious view. They want to impose their political view, the Islamic State view. So you could look at it that way if you want. It's a debate for sure. Let's take some calls on this issue of Donald Trump's statement about Muslims and immigration. Nick on WABC, your opinion counts. Go ahead, please. I uh, would like to point out that uh, part of the discomfort from Donald Trump's, uh, and I'm a Trump supporter, by the way, but part of the discomfort from what he just said comes from the fact that it could potentially result in permanence. Your seven years of no immigration policy is better simply because it has a time limit. What does Trump's find out what the hell is going on actually mean? You know, what can we... I don't know. I don't know. What, what, do you, what, what do you think it means since you're a reasonable, thoughtful man? I, 
I, that's the problem. I can't figure it out because at this point you can you could say, well, um, can, we can't bring Islamic uh, mass shooting situations. We can't bring that down to zero. It's almost impossible to do that. Some, you know, but would that mean just simply eradicating ISIS from the globe? Would that be the con- considered the find out what the hell is going on situation? It is patching up the leak somehow, finding out what's going on, and at that point, a smarter man than me would have to figure out how to do that. Well, I, I said point blank, as I've stated in Government Zero in the 40 Solutions to Save America, ban all immigration for seven years. What's wrong with that idea? I actually prefer it, because at least then we can... We can it's something that can be held to account. And it's interesting, oh, ban why, all did cho- why did I say seven years? I said ban, ban all immigrants because I believe it, number one. I don't care what the person's religion or race is. We cannot afford to bring in immigrants endlessly into a nation that's sinking in its own, in its own wake, number one. But number two, why do you think I chose the biblical, the biblical seven years? Because the seven years is very, very biblical. It's the seven year sabbatical cycle, et cetera. And of course, the academics understand what seven years mean. Uh, but let's go uh, back from that. Ban all immigrants for seven years. You agree with that one, though, right? Yeah, I would prefer it. It, it gives you something to hold, that we can hold you to account for. Interesting. So you're saying, in essence, you're a little concerned about the ban that uh, uh, Trump is saying because it's an open-ended thing. It can mean forever, right? That's my concern is that it's open-ended. Well, someone would say, what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's wrong with that is you can't get that passed. Um, a lot of things, right. and I, I think right. see now, now you. Now, but Nick, see, you're saying what I'm saying. Saying something and doing something are two different things. And then there's a political reality. There's a political quotient to every statement that a candidate makes. And we're dealing with a communist Islamist media. We know that. We know how slimy they are. We know that these people have no no integrity and no character whatsoever. We know that they hate American values. We know that they fought against everything decent in this country for the last 40 years. So you have to understand that everything needs to be taken in the context in which it is going to be heard, not just saying it. I'd call we know that Trump's, we know Trump supporters love him. We know that no matter what he says, they're going to love him even more. We also know that most Trump supporters would like to see Muslims banned indefinitely, by the way, because they don't want America's primary Christian Judeo or Judeo Christian basis eroded any further by the way you by the way you've never seen this kind of groundswell come up from the people the the prairie fire against mexicans have you and you know why because people say you know what we look around most of them work hard we look at construction sites and restaurants guatemalans are working there el salvadorans nicaraguans moreover they're catholics we actually understand that they're part of the culture in, in their own way they're in the americas they've been here longer than most of us right isn't that why most people never got that worked up over those people? I would agree with that. Well, there you go. It's a very difficult thing that I just said, but I said it. Why have we not seen such a shockwave about uh, immigration with regard to illegal immigrants from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Honduras? Well, there's been a lot of uh, dissension over it, but it's never come to this. And there's a reason for it. Stay on the line. I'll send you government zero for Christmas, assuming... You are a Christian. If you're a Zoroastrian, I'll send it to you for whatever the appropriate Zoroastrian uh, holiday uh, season it is. And, you know, by the way, speaking of holidays, we are in the holiday season. Most people are tuned out. Most people are tuned out from radio. They're not even listening to the political world anymore. Am I wrong or right about that? Maybe I'm wrong. I think most people are not. They're not tuned in. The audience that I have is very tuned in. But the average person is tuned out of politics right now. Now, why is it the media jumped down Donald's throat? Because the answer is because they could. Why have they let Hillary get away with virtual murder? She destroyed several nations single-handedly, caused the refugee crisis that the world is dealing with. Why has Jake Tapwater not said a word about it? Why has George uh, Staphylococcus said nothing about it? Why have all of these people in the peanut gallery of the left have nothing to say about Hillary's crimes against humanity? Why are they jumping down Trump's throat? The answer is in the question, because they're working for her. The government media complex is 99% Democrat. 97% of all people in the media agree with Hillary Clinton, because 97% of them have no soul whatsoever.
They're left-wing fanatics. They hate our borders. They hate our language. They hate our country.